it's like to go on a business trip as a structural engineer? Well, this is just a day in my life. I'm actually three to be exact. You see, I'm traveling to Sydney. So I have to have some in-person meetings and see some sites up there. Unfortunately, I'll not be able to bring you into those meetings. However, we'll be able to show you the hotel room, working in the office, and also give you some tips and tricks that'll help you be more successful in any business trips that you may have. To actually see what it's like to be on a business trip, we actually need to rewind about six hours. Now, you probably don't know a little bit about me, but I've traveled quite a lot because of recent events. So this has given me some a lot of insight about how to travel and how to travel light. So here's some tips that I would recommend you do every time you travel. Well, one of the first tips, which is something that's probably slightly new, is obviously bringing a mask and obviously getting a good mask, especially if you're traveling on a plane. It's going to be quite a long flight, so you want a good mask so you can breathe in and out for that whole flight. Something I would recommend you invest in. Now for the actual normal tips for any business trip, doesn't matter when it is. Obviously, when you're traveling, making sure you've got your chargers with you, as you don't want to get to side and not realize that you can actually charge your phones anymore. It's highly recommended, and especially if you've got a laptop as well, making sure you've got your laptop charger with you, which I've actually, remember, I've got to throw in before I actually leave. If you do need an external hard drive, one I'd recommend is this Samsung T5 hard drive. It's really small, it's got over two terabytes on it, so it easily packs into my bag. And also just making sure you've got enough cables and stuff with you. Another one you have to always have, getting ready the night before, making sure you've got everything with you, so especially your wallet. And if you do have cab chargers, making sure you've already booked your cab in the morning as well, to so make sure you can get there on time. And when you're actually getting ready, it's not just about what you're gonna actually pack in your bag, but also making sure you've got clothes laid out ready for you in the night before, and whatever other clothes you need. And when I'm traveling, especially for business, you generally need a suit case or something. So you can generally carry a separate suit with you on that flight. So this allows you to keep your suit nice and neat when you're flying there, because you don't necessarily want that jacket on for that whole flight. And one thing I do recommend as well, especially when you're traveling, even for a week, is trying to keep it all in carry-on luggage. You don't want to have that check-in luggage as it really slows you down. So it's really about traveling light and only carrying the minimum stuff that you need. And obviously with carrying light, it's having separate little bags for everything. So you can see I've got my clothes that's inside the hotel room. I've got my other electronics and stuff in a separate bag. So it allows me to quickly unpack and pack my luggage as needed. Yes, sometimes if you're traveling for more than a couple of weeks, you may not be able to get away with just carry on luggage. However, wherever possible, trying to travel as light as possible and having that carry on. As not only does it allow you to check in quite easily as you don't have that check in luggage, but you can also then just jump onto the flight and jump off the flight. So it allows for those transfers a lot quicker. See quite often people pack way too much stuff. It's only for a couple of days. You should better fit everything into one bag. You see, we're actually waiting for the cab at the moment, which we've actually pre-booked, which is coming in at about 5 a.m. Thirty minutes out before the flight, waiting for the flight to board and be off to Sydney. See you on the other side. Having landed in Sydney, instead of heading towards that taxi cab, we head for the much cheaper option, which is the train straight into the CBD of Sydney. So this is a pro tip for anyone traveling into Sydney. Grab the train, not only will it be cheaper and quicker, but it's also more relaxing as you get to sit on the train in a much more roomier, more convenient space. So we're just here in the hotel, just got in for the day. And uh, as you can see, it's been quite late. We're gonna have a look outside. So I'm just based here in World Square. So when I set up in the hotel room, obviously just getting a lay of the land, working out what I've got around, and also just moving my stuff into the cupboards. 
as you can see, I've got my suit all hung up. Obviously you saw I got up around 5 a.m. where I got into the taxi I booked. I flew to Sydney, didn't actually get any recording in the office today. It's been very busy in and out of meetings. Hopefully we'll pick up some more tomorrow. But as you can see, packing light really helped me out as when I got off flight, I was able to get straight onto the train and straight into Sydney. So I was in Sydney in, 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 and you're in the city in no time. So tonight I'll probably just do a little bit of work and we'll be back in tomorrow and maybe you'll hopefully see some of my work colleagues in Sydney. So we've got some meetings tomorrow and some more design work, but we'll get going with that and we'll see what's happening. So just starting day two or three, just gonna grab some breakfast and we'll see what we can get out on the street in Sydney. And then I'll head into the office and see where we go from there. So just got my coffee of the day, about to head into the office. Let's see what it looks like. So when in another office, my role doesn't really change, other than obviously going in and out of meetings and going to different sites. When I'm actually in the office, I, I basically do the same stuff that I would in my normal office. So I'm still talking to staff, going in and out of Skype meetings and designing structures. Obviously it's just day three, as you can see I'm suited up, I'm going to be in and out of meetings all day, so hopefully you can also see some of the sites of Sydney. So we're just finished meeting for the day. But we'll just go and see the Sydney Harbour Bridge, the Sydney Harbour. Have a look at what we're looking at. So we'll head back in the office and then we'll head to the airport. If you're wondering what a normal day in the life of a structural engineer is in the office, I'll link it here. And if there's anything else you wish me to cover, please comment below. And if I choose your idea, we'll get a shout out at the start of the episode. Don't forget to hit the like button. It's a small thing you can do and it really helps me out. And if you're interested in structural engineering, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and to get all updates you need to ding the bell. And I look forward to seeing you next week.